December is finally here and you know what that means, Christmas, my favorite time of the year. So this December I am cooking up an entire feast just for you. I've got everything from appetizers to savory, sweet and desserts and even little canopies that you can serve at your dinner party right at home. Throughout this journey of culinary wonders, I have Abans supporting me with their Elba ovens, with their Mistral air fryer, Philips air fryers, uh, BNB bakeware, and LG microwaves, and uh, their Abans kitchen appliances, which is helping me immensely throughout my culinary journey. You can follow me on my food adventures on Instagram at Pekishmi. And all these recipes that I'm doing here can be found on my website www.pekishmi.com. And this is homemade with Jayani Sisenanayaka and Aban here with you. Hello and welcome once again to yet another episode of Homemade. On today's episode, I am going to introduce you to some really easy recipes that you can whip up in a hurry on Christmas morning. And we all know how busy Christmas mornings are. So these are extremely simple and extremely easy to execute. So you won't be feeling any hassle at all. So stay tuned. So I'm going to start the day today with my easy oven eggs recipe. This is a very simple, extremely convenient recipe that can be whipped up on Christmas morning without any worry at all. And this I'm going to be preparing in my Elba oven today. So I'm going to first preheat my oven. I want both the top and bottom heating uh, functions with the fan. So that is what I'm going to set it to. And it's egg so I don't need a lot of heat. So I'm going to set it up to 150 degrees. So let that heat up and while that heats up, I'm going to prepare uh, the herb uh, mixture that I'm going to put into the eggs. So for the herb mixture that I'm going to make, I'm going to be using my Philips mixer grinder. It comes with three attachments. One is a spice jar, the other one is a blender and this is the chutney jar which I'm going to be using today. So I am going to throw in two big green chilies. I don't want the seeds so I'm going to take off the seeds because if you put in the seed, it's going to be a little too spicy. So it's very easy to take this off when you cut it in two. And I want some mint. I'm just going to, going to just break off the leaves. A handful is going to do. And then the cilantro. I need another handful of that. smells wonderful and then to this I'm going to add a squeeze of lemon and then obviously salt and a few cloves of garlic and some olive oil about two tablespoons bring it all together all this I am going to blend up in my chutney jar in the Philips mixer grinder. Right, we are done with the herb mix. Smells so fresh, so green. 
if you can see the color it looks extremely refreshing right so the hard part is over next is assembling my eggs for the oven so I have BNB bakeware here a very pretty little um, baking tray on which I've arranged four ramekins into which I am going to break one egg each bear in mind you can feed any amount of guests you want with this because the oven is an extremely convenient method of preparing large-scale dinners and this egg recipe in particular you can add any ramekins any amount of ramekins that you want into the um, oven and then just get large batches done in one go so we have the eggs in the ramekins right now so what I'm going to do is just add a spoonful of the mixture into the egg and just swirl it around a little bit one spoonful just lightly swirl it around if you don't like the egg yolk not broken you can actually break the egg yolk at this point but I like my egg yolk to be intact so I'm going to make it keep it as it is We are done. Now this goes into the oven, uh, 180 degrees for about 5 to 10 minutes and we are done. I'm going to start off by preparing my bacon. I don't need a frying pan for preparing bacon anymore because I have an LG inverter microwave. This I'm going to pop in the microwave for about two minutes uh, because I don't want the bacon to be crisp because it's going to be cooking in the waffle line anyway. So let me pop this in. Just Two minutes should do. So I'm going to start off by assembling the waffle batter and for that I'm going to be using my Philips mixer grinder and this time I'm going to be using the blender option I'm just going to add in the flour about two cups to this I need to add the onions I have a medium onion here so I'm just going to roughly chop it up we're done and throw all of that in I'm going to throw in this chunk of butter half a teaspoon of baking powder because I want them nice and fluffy and then we are going to throw in the milk I have the eggs here, I'm going to crack that in as well. So while we were assembling this, my bacon just got ready, so I'm going to take that out. Nice. So I'm just going to add this right out of the pan into the blender. Now we blend this. All the ingredients needs to come together, there can't be any lumps in the batter. Our batter is now ready. If you can see, smooth without any lumps 
and everything is incorporated. I can't even find a piece of onion. It's all incorporated into the batter. So that when you bite in, you will have all that onion, all that um, bacon, everything serenading your taste buds. Right, so let's keep that aside for the time being. So I have my Abans waffle lion here, my trusty companion in waffle making. So I'm going to preheat this. I'm going to turn it up to four or five to preheat the oven. And while I'm preheating it, I need to grease it with some non-stick spray. So that my waffles will come out nice and easy. So leave that in until the light here turns green. My waffle line is preheated. So I am going to ladle some of this waffle batter into the iron. About two spoonfuls, I'm going to spread this. And just close it, okay. let it do its trick. So our eggs are ready, I'm going to take it out of the oven. Look at that. A touch of green, a touch of yellow, sunshine. And I really can't wait to dig into this. The waffle is ready. You know when the light turns green here, that the waffle is ready. Look at that. Golden and fluffy, just the way I like it. Just carefully lift it and slides right on to a plate. This is your waffle and I'm going to serve it with my oven egg. And just sprinkle some parsley on it. And your breakfast is served. So this is my Christmas morning breakfast. Uh, my easy Christmas morning savory waffles with bacon and my oven baked eggs. So I am just going to dig in. Mm. Beautifully fluffy. You have a nice crust forming on the outside and inside it's very soft, it's very fluffy and it's very light. That is the most important thing to form this very simple, very easy, very quick breakfast waffle. And I'm going to now dig a piece of that into my egg and see how it is. You see the herby part you need to combine with the rest of the egg and together they make the best of friends with the waffle. Let's have a taste. Mm. The greenness of those herbs along with the green chili come together like a big fresh hit of greenness and a very very easy breakfast to put on your Christmas table in the morning. Next up, I have something that is one of my favorites for Christmas, and that is a pork roast. It's a very simple recipe, it might look very complicated but it is not. It just has very few ingredients. So to start off I have a piece of belly pork. Um, this is about one and a half kilograms uh, in weight and I made sure that I have a uniform um, width right throughout the cut of pork. And we have garlic and we have brown sugar. 
we have onion, we have salt and pepper, we have paprika or the Sri Lankan chili powder, we have chili flakes and we have mustard seeds and we have a, a pinch of oregano which I'm going to use in the rub and to bring that all together I need a bit of a vegetable to go along with the pork roast and I'm going to do that in the same pan makes matters so much more easier I have some baby potatoes washed and dried full of um, that earthy goodness that potatoes hold but in small packages so first things first I need to preheat my oven so I have my Elba oven here today I need a temperature of around 225 degrees to start off and uh, we will go from there we will start from there and we will proceed on I want the meat to be cooked right throughout which is why we are using the fan function at first and then I want a nice crackling to be formed on top and we will be later on using the broiler function the top heating function for that from my elbow oven later on so we are going to move on to the rub right now so the rub I'm going to make in my Aban's mixer grinder which comes with three attachments the first one is a blender and we also have the spice jar in which I uh, just uh, powder all my cinnamon and all the cardamom and all my spices and then we have the chutney jar in which you can grind to a fine paste your urad dal, the mung dal uh, and basically any chutney that you want to make and this is the attachment that I'm going to be using to make my rub so we have an onion I'm not even going to bother to cut it because the chutney jar does its magic and then I have the brown sugar which I'm just going to throw in there as well and then a few garlic cloves I like my garlic so I'm going to throw in a bit extra so this is about um, about six garlic cloves and I need pepper plenty of it because it's a big chunk of meat that we're dealing with today and salt again sufficiently and then about two tablespoons of mustard seed this beautifully vibrant chili powder and then the oregano this is a whole hot pot of flavors that is going on here so I am just going to pulse that all in I think our rub is ready if you can see this it's liquid brown and smells amazing I'm going to just place it aside I'm going to take my pork this big hunk of pork so onto this I'm going to just pour look at that thick and moist and full of garlic onion and the spices that we threw in chili and there's the brown sugar for caramelization a bit of sweetness and a lot of spiciness and make sure you cover all the sides and you need to let this rest for at least half an hour before popping it in the oven so this has been resting for about half an hour in the fridge so before I pop it in I have some baby potatoes cleaned and dried I'm just going to pop all of this in I'm not going to add any seasoning to it it's going to broil in the pork juices and the, the mixture that we um, prepared the rub killing two birds with one stone as I would say just pop this in the oven and forget all about it So this stays in the oven 200 degrees uh, with just the fan function for about half an hour until the meat cooks right through and then in a little while we are going to switch it to the grilling function to get that beautiful crust on the top so let the elba do its work we just go and rest so my pork has been slow roasting in the oven for the past two and a half hours and I could see when I checked it that uh, the beautiful crackling has formed on the top 
and the meat is cooked right throughout and that fat layer has rendered down beautifully and coated the potatoes as well. So I'm going to have a second look and I am going to take it out of the oven. And here it is. If you can see, the layers of fat has rendered down and the top has formed a beautiful crackling and it's still hissing, it's still warm from the oven and it's still cooking, the juices are still flowing and the potatoes have been beautifully coated in all that juice. I've made it a point to turn the potatoes as it cooks because otherwise it will just brown on the top and it will not um, get all of that flavour in from the pork. So I'm going to try and manage this whole hunk of pork and plate it up into this dish. Let me see if I can manage it. Yes. I didn't think that it would be that easy actually. So let me put in the potatoes. The potatoes are nicely coated in that onion gravy. So you don't need any extra seasoning because you have all the seasoning you need in that. I'm going to drizzle some of that beautiful juice on top of the pork because I don't want to let all that flavor go to waste. You don't really need a gravy for this because it is self-sourcing. I'm going to dig into this and see how it has cooked. Slices like butter so you can imagine how cooked it is inside. I'm going to show you how it looks. This is how wonderfully cooked it is. Still very juicy, if you can see this. And the fat layer remains moist and it hasn't dried out even one bit. And there is a crackling forming on the skin. And I can't imagine how very well delicious this is right now. A few potatoes as well. First try the potato. Mm. That potato is wonderfully cooked. I love the fact that the jacket itself of the potato gives it that nice flavor. And you get that sweetness from the brown sugar. And then you also get that caramelly flavor from the onions when you bite into the potatoes. I'm going to try the pork now. That's just perfect. You get that sweetness from the brown sugar inside the flesh itself. And then that wonderful crackling rind, very crisp in your mouth. And then the flesh itself, extremely moist. And the hero in this dish is definitely with the pork. It's not overpowered with anything. It's just right out there, the pork flavor is out there. A beautifully moist pork roast with baby potatoes that is self-sourcing. You don't need to serve a sauce with it in my Elba oven. So that's it for today. But next week, we have so much more interesting things for you to serve in your Christmas table. But don't worry if you missed any of the steps in any of the recipes because I am going to update them on my food blog www.pekishmi.com and you can also follow me on Instagram at pekishmi. So this is Jain Sisena Naika signing off for today on Homemade with Abans. Stay tuned next week, same time. Mm -hmm.